Mr. Speaker, I ask unanimous consent to address the House for five minutes. Without objection, the gentleman's recognized. As we stand here, a five-year-old woke up in a cage. She committed no crime. She came here seeking hope and rescue. Instead, Mr. Speaker, she, has taken, she was taken from her parents, from her brothers and sisters, from all she knows and loves. She does not know where she is. She does not know where her family is. She does not speak the language of her captors, and she may never see her family again. This morning, Mr. Speaker, that innocent little child is crying in a cage. We stand here doing nothing as innocent little babies sit in modern day camps. That's not right, it's not fair, and it's not just. And Madam Speaker, history will not be kind to us if we continue to pass this unbelievable injustice on to our children. And now I yield to Mr. Crawley from New York. Thank you, Mr. Lewis. There's only one word that goes through my mind when I think about what this White House is doing to children right now. It's shame. Shame on them. For years, we saw Republicans try to attack Democrats for having the goal to give millions of Americans health care or to address global warming. Your leader stood up on this floor and said, shame on us. Shame on you for letting this happen, for being willing to let kids be kept in warehouses because you can't stand up to this president. These are children, children who deserve the love of a mother and a father, not cages and concrete floors. These are children, babies in some cases. They need someone to comfort them when they can't sleep, to cool their food when it's too hot, to give them those basics of love and kindness that these children need. What they don't need is to be used as hostages for President Trump to get his anti-immigrant wish list and a wall. They don't need to be demonized when their families are seeking refuge. If President Trump and the Republicans don't think these families deserve asylum or protection, if they don't think these people deserve a chance of, of a life of safety, they are wrong. But these are matters that we can debate. But you mean to tell me you don't think these children deserve the love of their mother and the comfort of their father? You mean to tell me these, that the, the Bible puts law above keeping families together? Absolutely not. Shame on this White House and on everyone who stands with them. Shame on our country if we let this continue. Al Green. Al Green. Uh, now you have the Congressman Al Green. You should continue to stand. I thank the gentleman for yielding. Mr. Speaker, uh, Madam Speaker, this is what it has come to. We stand here in the well of the House, appealing to, in a sense, begging the President to acknowledge the undeniable truth, the undeniable truth that this is a crisis that he can end with the stroke of a pen. This is a crisis that he has created, and it is a crisis that he can eliminate. The undeniable truth is that if a president can see these babies crying and pleading for their parents, mama, father, papa, if a president can see this and not take action, his heart has hardened to the extent that he is unfit to be president. I yield back. Madam Speaker, our nation is mourning. Our nation is crying out to save our little children, save our babies. History will not be kind to us as a nation and as a people if we continue to go down this road. We must stop the madness and stop it now. There was a man by the name of A. Philip Randolph, who was the dean of black leadership during the 60s when we were planning the march on Washington. He kept saying maybe our foremothers and our forefathers all came to this great land in different ships, but we all are in the same boat now, our little children our babies, our young people, 
are crying out for help. We need help for members of Congress. We can do better. Time has expired. I yield back to Ben. The chair recognizes the gentleman from Pennsylvania, Mr. Fitzpatrick, for five minutes. Mr. Speaker, I rise today to recognize the accomplishments of several young people in Bucks County, Pennsylvania that are advocating for environmental protection using their artistic talents. Recently, the Countryside Gallery in Newtown featured an exhibit titled One Planet, Wildlife Vulnerable to Climate Change. This exhibit gave students, under the guidance of artist Bonnie Porter, the ability to share their wildlife paintings in an effort to spread awareness of the threat of climate change. I'm proud to recognize them now. Amelia Binkley, Bella Cacciatore, Allison Cirillo, Victoria Cirillo, Taylor Doms, Amanda Gardner, Olivia Kelly, Brady Klein, Addison Kohler, Emily LaPlante, Kate Logan, Jessica Martin, Nicole McCora, Grace Porter, Olivia Ralston, Nolan Riesenberg, Chris Reither, Violet Schroer, Gabby Smith, Abby Stedman, Aaron Stone, Katie Secunda, Ella Walsh, and Anna Williamson. Madam Speaker, I applaud the act activism, thoughtfulness, and impressive artistic abilities of these young citizens.